Great. And uh, we're glad you're here, and we're going to begin our worship with the anthem. What's our Gather open? Us Gather us in. How appropriate. So every Saturday morning when Pastor Park right here, uh, she saying uh, welcome, uh, even your white or boy, which, but I'm saying in tongue of Malolele. And you say Malolele. There's nothing else to do to welcome you guys in the house of God. This morning, I want to say the mercy of all the miracle is mercy. We are here and they are there on the Zoom. Welcome you to the house of God and hope his Praise be ours today. Thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, your mercy delights us and the Lord longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
Our first reading is from Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 9 through 14. Moses calls the people who are about to enter the promised land to renew the covenant God made with their ancestors. Through this covenant, God gives life and asks for obedience. God's commandment is neither burdensome nor too far off, but dwells in the people's hearts. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law. Because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of, the, of God. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading is from chapter 25, verse 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none look who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, our steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and testimony. Our third reading for today is from Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. The letter to the Colossians was written to warn its readers of various false teachings. The first part of the letter is an expression of thanks for the faith, hope, and love that mark this community including a prayer for strength and courage from Paul. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father our Lord, Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so that it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will 
in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Be God. Will the children come forward for the kiss talk? We're going to thank Linda for the Well, how, how embarrassing. Oh. There, well, I want to tell you how, all how much I appreciate you being here and how unprepared I am for a kids' talk. <laughs> there was kind of a miscommunication, and it was my fault, and I beg your forgiveness. Ooh. So what I would like to do next, if it's all right with you, is ask you to get up again and... Um, let's do the gospel parade. Can you do that? Thank you so much. Thank you. That was a good kids talk. Okay. <laughs> they received an apology and and you asked their forgiveness. Right, and, I, right. and I bet they all say they forgive you. Well, you guys are so good. Alex? Do we want some? So Alex? Alex can, um, can, can, uh, Alex is carrying the cross, and, and Bessie's carrying the Bible. You're going to carry the Bible for the gospel parade? Can you I'm, change your mind? We haven't been doing this so much okay. for the last couple of we'll years, so okay. we're just going to play. tells us a parable rich in surprises. Those expected to show pity display hard hearts, while the lowly give and receive unexpected and lavish mercy. The reading from Luke. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw the man, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. 
The next day, the Samaritan took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, take care of this man, and when I come back, I will pay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Barbara is on a well-deserved and earned break. She asked me to talk with you today. I hope that my words come from the Spirit. In the Gospel teaching today, we have another lawyer who needs to hear what Jesus wants to teach us. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded with a question about what was written in the law, and the lawyer quoted the law from Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. The lawyer asks, really on behalf of all of us, who is my neighbor? And that was a good question actually, because the full verse from Leviticus is, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Jesus came for all of humanity, not just the members of our own family or tribe, community, religion, political party, race, or nationality. Jesus' story contrasts the behavior of the priest and the Levite, i.e. the teachers and leaders of the Hebrew tribes, with that of a foreigner, the Samaritan. If the Samaritan himself had been the one in need, the admonition from Leviticus would have explained the priest and Levites failing to help him because, of course, the Samaritan was not their neighbor under the law of the Old Testament. Jesus is always teaching us new things, giving us fresh perspectives. Who is our neighbor? Martin Luther said it plainly, our neighbor is any human being, especially one who needs our help. So today's global communications allow us to see in ultra high def, our neighbors in need. Every time we turn on the television news, check our web feeds, or open a newspaper, for those of us who still open newspapers, we are the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan going down the road where our beaten and half-dead neighbor lies. And we drive on that road in the Bay Area and walk on that sidewalk seeing our neighbors in need. O oh Lord, what shall I do? I know you all well enough to understand that you too ask that question daily. What shall I do? I also know that each of you answers the question by serving your neighbors in need in your own ways. You inspire me. I'd like to tell you today about some of the ways that we together as a congregation provide care for our neighbors near and far. A portion of our first fruits gifts to Holy Redeemer are shared with service ministries of the ELCA. One of them is Lutheran Social Services of Northern California, often called LSS. 
The LSS mission is to be part of the solution to ending homelessness in our region. It focuses on supportive housing, helping individuals and families of all ages to rebuild their lives after experiencing homelessness. Meet Sammy and Chris, two teenagers who had just finished high school and were starting courses at Modesto Junior College when the pandemic hit. They, with their mother Sophia, lost their housing and their jobs and ended up living out of their van. But the young men were still trying to continue their studies, online of course, by relying on their cell phones for connections. A professor at the college realized their circumstances and helped them connect to LSS's program for aiding homeless college students. As a result of the LSS coordination, the family is now in stable housing and Sammy and Chris are able to continue their college studies. Through the LSS Support for Seniors program, critical financial assistance is provided throughout the Bay Area to seniors whose expenses outweigh their income so that they can stay in their homes and remain independent. A money management is also offered. Money management program is also offered. Bibi, a trans woman who faced serious insecurity over her life and had no steady home for years, was finally able to move into an apartment building for LGBTQ plus seniors. Bibi shared, but I had trouble paying my rent. When I would get my social security checks, I would just spend them. Like many others in her situation, she lived a cash-based life. I was robbed more than once, she explained. And because I liked to spend money, people took advantage of me. With help from the LSS professional staff, Bibi has a plan in place now for handling her money, so her rent and other living expenses are covered and she maintains her home. Holy Redeemer's financial support for the Lutheran Social Services is one of the ways that we care for our neighbors in need. Then halfway across the world, our contributions through our national church organization, the ELCA, and its World Hunger Program and Lutheran World Relief support the work of St. Martin's Lutheran Church in Krakow, Poland. That congregation saw the need of our Ukrainian neighbors who were forced to flee the bombing in Kharkiv. The congregation's fellowship hall was transformed into a hostel for refugees. Lutheran World Relief is providing food, health supplies, and toys for refugees being sheltered there. Another ELCA ministry is disaster relief which functions within the United States and throughout the world. This year, it has channeled more than $10 million to support relief projects in Ukraine and the surrounding countries. Lutheran disaster relief stays in areas even after the immediate disaster, helping people recover for the long term from California wildfires and the Gulf of Mexico hurricanes earthquakes in Haiti, droughts in the Horn of Africa, and chaos in Afghanistan, all over the world. Cash support along with emergency items, food, clean water, hygiene products are being provided to refugees. And specialists offer protection and safeguarding of vulnerable individuals, as well as gender justice and the prevention of sexual exploitation and abuse. These are ways that we care for our neighbors in need. If you'd like to learn more about these service organizations and how we can act together to show mercy for our neighbors here and throughout the world, just ask. An ELCA staff member, Catherine Mary Lohr, shares these thoughts. If we read the parable of the Good Samaritan closely, we come to understand that it is precisely through God, our God-given neighbors that we most readily receive the generosity of God's mercy and love. 
being a neighbor and receiving the neighborliness of others made in God's image not only heals our bodies, but buoys our faith and gives us hope. This spiritual refreshment is precisely what sustains us as we work with our neighbors to bind the wounds of the whole inhabited earth, which is God's beloved neighborhood. The lawyer re recited from the law, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. Amen. Amen.
United in Christ and guided by spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. God of grace, hear us Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetrate ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. God of grace, hear our prayer. Come near to all in need, orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty, hope where there's despair, love in the face of neglect, comfort where there is death, and healing in illness. God of grace, hear our prayer. Turn this community towards neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, and avoided. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. So I will get the bread and the bread.
I thought you were going to read that. Okay, I will now. Yeah. In the beginning, you created us for yourself. But even though we have fallen through our disobedience to sin and death, you in your infinite mercy, grace, and love sent your only begotten Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to live among us as a man born of a virgin. He suffered every hardship and adversity, every trial, trouble, tribulation, and temptation that we face, except without sin. Finally, he stretched out his arms upon the cross in perfect obedience to your will and offered himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. On the night on which our Lord Jesus was given over to suffering and death through the betrayal, he took the bread, and after he had blessed it and given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. After the supper, he took the cup, and after he had blessed it and given thanks to you, he said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the remission of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we eat the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We proclaim his death until he comes again. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Take the bread and give it to his disciple and say, Take and eat. Also, we take the cup. The cup I hold is the type of Jesus' blood. You remember him, drink, to remember of Jesus dying cross because of you and I. for the body and blood that you have given to us, Lord Jesus. We ask that it would nourish us, strengthen us, and that um, the words of the sermon reflections will remain in our hearts as we cherish and remember this sacred meal that we share together. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mouthful kayak. Go we beg all courtesy. Give it to us in your name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 